Hi bookish besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Breeds. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today we are here to talk about some of the releases coming out in June. All right, so today we are here to talk about some of the other notable releases that are coming out in the month of June. As a quick reminder, all of the books that I feature in my monthly book of the month predictions are also new releases that are coming out in the same month. So none of those releases are going to be featured here just to reduce redundancy. So if you would like to learn about a lot more new releases that are coming out in the month of June, please be sure to go visit that book of the month prediction video, which I will try to leave linked down below. These are just all of the new releases that didn't make that book of the month prediction video that I thought you might want to have on your radar. I actually actually have quite a few this time around just because as I mentioned in that prediction video I wasn't really sold on a lot of the books that were coming out in terms of their eligibility for book of the month so again these are all of the other new releases that either I am interested in reading or that I think you might be interested in reading so of course we are going to start with the very first Tuesday in June which is June 4th and we are going to start with the newest release from Lisa Wingate called Shelterwood so this says it is a sweeping novel inspired by the untold history of women pioneers who fought to protect children caught in the storm of land barons hungry for power and oil wealth. In this emotional and enveloping novel, Lisa Wingate traces the story of children abandoned by the law and the battle to see justice done. Amid times of deep conflict over who owns the land and its riches, characters Ollie and Val traverse the wild and beautiful terrain, each leaving behind one life in search of another. There's going to be two timelines, Oklahoma 1909, and then there's going to be a more present day perspective in Oklahoma 1990. And I'm interested in it. I really enjoyed Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. I haven't read anything else by her, but I know that I was contacted by the publisher to kind of review the book. So I may be getting a copy of this at some point. And if I do, I will absolutely read it and share my thoughts and feelings on this channel. So this is definitely one that is on my radar. And I think that you might want it on your radar as well. And then I actually only have one more for June 4th. It's actually a new release from Devney Perry. It sounds like she's going to be starting a new romance series. Devney Perry is a very beloved romance author. I personally know that she is not for me because I have tried and DNF'd her books multiple times. But like I said, I know that she's very well beloved. And this is a new series. It is is called Haven River Ranch and it is another small town romance. It says, I met West Haven when I was eight years old. He taught me to play poker when I was nine and we made paper airplanes together when I was 11. He kissed me when I was 16. He was the best part of my family's summer vacations to Montana. He was the boy who stole my heart. I was 23 when life ripped us apart. Years later, I'm breaking my vow and returning to the ranch, not as a guest, but its new owner. West might want me gone, but even he has to admit the only way to save his family's legacy is with my help. It's not easy working side by side and facing those old memories, but the situation is only temporary. We are at a crossroads. And as long as I don't let myself fall in love with West Haven again, maybe this is our chance to put those ghosts to rest. Maybe this time we'll finally be able to say goodbye. This is absolutely going to be like a second chance romance. And those tend to work for me. I really enjoy second chance romances when they are done well. I still don't think I'm going to be picking this one up just because of my history with Devney Perry. But if you love her, be on the lookout for this one coming out on June 4th. Moving on into June 11th, we have the newest release from Peter Swanson called A Talent for Murder. Now this actually says that it's the third book in his Henry Kimball slash Lily Kintner series. So I'm not really going to dive deeply into the synopsis of this. It just says a newlywed librarian begins to suspect the man she married might be a murderer in this spectacularly twisty and deviously clever novel by Peter Swanson. I really don't think that you have to read these in any type of order. I really think that you can probably read them out of order. But just in case, I don't want to risk any type of spoilers whatsoever. Just know that if you are a fan of Peter Swanson, if you are a fan of the series, this next one is coming out on June 11th. We also have the newest release by Paul Tremblay. Now, Paul Tremblay is another author that I'm really not all that familiar with but I know that he is a very well-respected horror novel and I've heard some really good things about his stories. This is set in June 1993. A group of young guerrilla filmmakers spent four weeks making horror movie a notorious disturbing art house horror flick, kind of sounding like a little bit of the Blair Witch Project here. The weird part, only three of the film scenes were ever released to the public, but horror movie has nevertheless grown a rabid fan base. Three decades later, Hollywood is pushing for a big budget reboot. The man who played the thin kid is the only surviving cast member. He remembers all too well the secrets buried within the original screenplay, the bizarre events of the filming and the dangerous crossed lines on set that resulted in tragedy. As memories flood back in, the boundaries between reality and film, past and present, start to blur. But he's going to help remake the film, even if it means navigating a world of cynical producers, egomaniacal directors, and surreal fan conventions. Demons of the past be damned, but at what cost? Horror movie is an obsessive, psychologically chilling, and suspenseful twist on the cursed film that breathlessly builds to an unforgettable, mind-bending conclusion. It actually sounds really interesting. I'm really vibing with it. This, again, is coming out on June 11th. This would fit very, very 
very well with the team spooky books for the amazing readathon I am just saying so if you like Paul Tremblay if you like horror be on the lookout for this one and then also coming out on the 11th is the next book in the housemaid series by Frieda McFadden called the housemaid is watching this is definitely one that I'm not going to say anything about because it is the third in a thriller series that started with the housemaid went through the housemaid secret and then now the housemaid is watching this does sound like it's going to be set a few years in the future after the housemaid secret ended so if you've really been enjoying this series by Frieda McFadden keep your eye out for this one coming out on the 11th I know I am personally really excited about it and then the very final book that I have for June 11th is actually a thriller that only recently came on my radar but I wanted to mention it here because it sounds a little bit intriguing it is called The Paris Widow by Kimberly Bell it says when Stella met Adam she thought she had finally found a nice normal guy a welcome change from her previous boyfriend and her precarious jet setter lifestyle with him but her secure world comes crashing down when Adam goes missing after an explosion in the city square unable to reach him she panics as the French police investigate it's revealed that Adam was on their radar as a dealer of rare and stolen antiquities with a long roster of criminal clients. Reeling from this news, Stella is determined not to leave Paris until she has the full story. Was Adam a random victim or the target of the explosion? And why is someone following her throughout the streets of Paris? An irresistible, fast-paced read set in some of Europe's most inviting locales, The Paris Widow explores how sinister secrets of the past stay with us no matter how far we travel. So again, that's a little bit on the vague side, a little bit general. It seems like there's certainly going to have a lot of tropes about a woman who marries a man who's hiding a lot of secrets. She doesn't really know anything about him. And then some something happens and all of these secrets are revealed what actually he was hiding I think that this can be very well done but at the same time it is also overdone so I would have to reserve my judgment on this one until I actually read it I don't know it's on my radar I haven't actually added it to my TBR yet and I haven't actually read anything from this author Kimberly Bell so we're gonna keep an eye on that one but I did want to mention it here all right moving on into the 18th we have what seems is going to be another very atmospheric type thriller it is called The Nature of Disappearing by Kimmy Cunningham Grant it says Emily doesn't let herself think about the past how she and her best friend Janessa barely speak anymore. How Tyler, the man she thought was the love of her life, left her freezing and half dead on the side of the road three years ago. Her new life is simple and safe. She works as a fishing and hunting guide, spending her days in Idaho's endless woods and scenic rivers. She lives alone in her Airstream trailer, her closest friends, a handsome and kind forest service ranger, and the community's makeshift reverend who took her in at her lowest. But when Tyler shows up with the news that Janessa is missing, Emmeline is propelled back into the world she worked so hard to forget. Janessa, it turns out, has become a social media star, documenting her van life adventures with her rugged survivalist boyfriend. But she hasn't posted lately and when she does it's from a completely different location than where her caption claims to be. In spite of their fractured history, Emmeline knows she must be the only one with the knowledge and tracking skills to save her friend so she reluctantly teams up with Tyler. As the two trace Janessa's path through miles of wild country, Emmeline can't deny there's chemistry crackling between them but the deeper they press into the wilderness the more she begins to suspect that a darker truth lies in the woods and that Janessa's life isn't the only one in danger. So I absolutely love thrillers that are set in a wildlife setting. You all know that I also really love like isolationist thrillers so this definitely sounds like it's going to be atmospheric right at my alley. I do love the idea that there's going to be a complicated dynamic between our main character and somebody that she has a history with. Also the person that is missing is her former best friend so there's definitely a complicated history as well there. So I'm actually really really intrigued by this one. This is certainly one that I'm keeping on my watch and I might add it to my TBR. Next on the 18th we have a cute contemporary called The Lonely Hearts Trivia Night by Lauren Farnsworth. It says five lonely strangers join a bar trivia team in an effort to find friends end up on a path that will change each of their lives forever in this heartwarming debut perfect for fans of Beth O'Leary and Sophie Kinsella. So if you enjoy any of those authors this might be something that is right up your alley. Like I said it definitely seems like it's going to be cute, uplifting, heartwarming, definitely charming, maybe a little bit of a cozy read after you've gotten done reading something dark and need something to uplift your spirits. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from this story so be on the lookout for this one as well. And then the last book that I have for the 18th is actually a book I was thinking about featuring for my book of the month predictions but I didn't. I ended up keeping it off so we're going to see if it is actually featured but it is a book called Same As It Ever Was by Claire Lombardo and this is definitely a family drama which is why I thought that it could be a solid book of the month prediction because we all know how much book of the month loves their family dramas. The synopsis of this one is pretty long so I'm just going to read the ending of it here. It says Same As It Ever Was traverses the rocky terrain of real life exploring new adventures of maternal ambivalence, intergenerational friendship, and the happenstantial cause and effect that governs us all. Delving even deeper into the nature of relationships, how they grow, change, and sometimes end, Lombardo proves herself a true and definitive cartographer of the human heart and asserts herself among the finest novelists of her generation. So that is extremely high praise. So sorry if there has been a change of angle or anything like that. My battery completely died on me while I was filming that last clip. I thought I had plenty of time but apparently I did not so I'm sorry for any abrupt changes here but I believe what I was saying is that I really do enjoy a great family drama. I love exploring those complex character dynamics, those relationships that are explored throughout the novels. It really helps me connect to the characters so I haven't necessarily added this one to 
my TBR. I've never read anything by Claire Lombardo, but again, this review gives her very, very high praise. So if you have read anything by her, please let me know because this is certainly an intriguing one to me. All right, and then moving on into June 25th, the very final release Tuesday of the month, we actually have quite a few to talk about here, starting with the newest release by Josh Mallerman called Incidents Around the House. Again, I'm not really familiar with Josh Mallerman, but he's a very notable, respected kind of horror author. So I wanted to mention him here. To eight-year-old Bella, her family is her world. There's mommy, daddo, and grandma Ruth. But there's also other mommy, a malevolent entity who asks her every day, can I go inside your heart? When horrifying incidents around the house signal that other mommy is growing tired of asking Bella the same question over and over, Bella understands that unless she says yes, soon her family must pay. Other mommy is getting restless, stronger, bolder. Only the bonds of family can keep Bella safe, but other incidents show cracks in her parents' marriage. The safety Bella relies on is on the brink of unraveling, but other mommy needs an answer. Incidents around the house is a chillingly, wholly unique tale of true horror told by a child, a story about a family as haunted as their home. Now, that is definitely not something up my alley. I hate stories that are told from children's perspectives, but it definitely has got that creep factor in there. There's a malevolent spirit that is trying to take advantage of a child, and who knows what is going to ensue. If you love horror, if you love this type of vibe, if you like Josh Mallerman, again, this one's coming out on the 25th. And of course, a super notable release that is coming out on the 25th is the newest release by Ashley Poston called A Novel Love Story. I've only read The Seven Year Slip, and it was fine. It was nothing remarkable to me. I definitely didn't connect to it as much as a lot of other people did, but I would absolutely be willing to give her another shot. It says, Eileen Merriweather loves to get lost in a good happily ever after, the fictional kind anyway, because at least imaginary men don't leave you at the altar. She feels safe in a book at home, which might be why she's so set on going to her annual book club retreat this year. But when her car unexpectedly breaks down on the way, she finds herself stranded in a quaint town that feels like it's right out of a novel, because it is. This place can't be real, and yet she's here in Aloraton, the town of her favorite romance series. It feels like home. It's perfect. I'm perfectly frozen, trapped in the late author's last unfinished story. Elsie is sure that's why she must be here, to help bring the town to its storybook ending, except there is a character in Elleraton that she can't place, a grumpy bookstore owner with mint green eyes, an irritatingly sexy mouth, and impeccable taste in novels, and he does not want her finishing this book. Which is a problem because Elsie is beginning to think the town's happily ever after might just be intertwined with her own. So I love the sound of that. That sounds absolutely remarkable. I would love to see what Ashley Poston can do with this story, and maybe it would be one that hits me a little bit harder than The Seven Year Slip did. Another fun one that we have coming out is definitely on my radar. It is certainly one that I thought about also adding to my book of the month predictions just because it is so unusual. It's not getting the best ratings. It's only at a 3.67 right now, but it seems super interesting. It is called Love Letters to a Serial Killer by Tasha Coriel. There's just a small little blurb here. It says, when handsome lawyer Wesley is arrested for a series of murders, recently ghosted 30-something Hannah begins writing him letters as an outlet for both her frustration at her failure to launch and her feminist rage. The exercise empowers her and even feels healthy at first until Wesley writes back. Their correspondence tips Hannah's interest in the case from curiosity to obsession, leaving space for nothing else as her life implodes around her. Hannah is the first person Wesley calls upon his release, and they quickly fall into a routine of domestic bliss. Well, as blissful as one can feel while secretly investigating their partner for serial murder. You have a woman who's writing to a serial killer, they seemingly fall in love, and then he is released and she's investigating him. So I don't know what that's going to look like, but it is definitely more on the unusual side. Like I said, it sounded like it was going to be an interesting, fun time, and I wanted to mention it here. And then the very last one that I want to mention is another thriller that is definitely on my radar. It says that it's going to be a soaring thriller and an epic love story that spans decades. It says 1975 is a time of change in America. The Vietnam War is ending, Muhammad Ali is fighting Joe Frazier, and in the small town of Monteclara, Missouri, girls are disappearing. When the daughter of a wealthy family is targeted, a most unlikely hero emerges. Patch, a local boy with one eye who saves the girl and in doing so leaves heartache in his wake. Patch and those who love him soon discover that the line between triumph and tragedy has never been finer and that their search for answers will lead them to truths that could mean losing one another. A missing person mystery, a serial killer thriller, a love story, a unique twist on each. Chris Whitaker has written a novel about what lurks in the shadows of obsession and the blinding light of hope. Say no more. I'm actually really, really interested in this one. This is definitely on my radar. It is definitely going on my TBR, my wish list, all of the things, because I really want to try this author and I want to see what he does with this storyline for sure. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are just some of the additional new releases that are coming out in June that I wanted to go ahead and put on your radar. As per usual, if there are any new releases that you want to make sure that other people people are aware of that I did not mention in this video or in my book of the month prediction video, please feel free to leave those down in the comments below so that people can be aware of all the new releases. I try to make both videos as comprehensive as possible, talking about the most notable new releases so that you can have a really solid idea of what is actually coming out so that you can put them on your TBR. If you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some kind of tree emoji in honor of all of the very atmospheric nature related thrillers, literary fictions and stuff that are coming out. It seems like that's a common theme recently. I'm really excited about this trend. So go ahead and leave me some kind of 
tree emoji. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.